you know, we're good at breaking down what we see on our actual TV screen, but you know what goes on behind the scenes with this. So my first question is, is this deal with AEW, from your perspective, very good for AEW moving forward? I think it is good for AEW. I think it gives them that that bifurcation that you're also seeing between keeping a, a linear TV presence, keeping what fans have been used to, and also seeing what the future is, and that's getting that presence on Max, which is going to continue to grow as a streaming platform. You know, whether that gets merged with something else, that's a broader media ecosphere sort of question. Whether Warner Brothers Discovery merges with another company or is bought out by another company, but just looking at what they're doing, what David Zaslov is trying to do at Warner Brothers Discovery is grow Max as a streaming platform. This does it. This gets young viewers in the door for Max. It gets a strong, young, especially male audience. And it continues to prop up the cable business by keeping those audiences, that live audience on TNT and TBS. So. So there's there's a lot of questions we have. Uh, I have because you know we're constantly online. We're debating people on Twitter on what the ratings meant this one week, what the ratings mean long term, how they looked last year. What is that focus when Warner Brothers brings that deal or negotiates with some like an AEW? What are the numbers that they're looking at? Because a lot of us we get really quickly biased. Like if we like the show one week, we're like, well, what were the ratings? What's the deal? Like. That is not how this business works when you're not on Twitter arguing with a fan who likes one side. Could you break that down for us? Because it's one of the most interesting things in the world for a long-term deal or at least a year deal, multi-year deal, however mm -hmm. that goes. How do, what goes into that from the company's perspective? Yeah, I think a lot of people are just bringing that from their traditional stick and ball sport. thing. like, oh, my God, this NFL game was terrible. They're <laughs> falling yeah. apart. The NFL is going to go out of business. <laughs> right. Yeah. So everyone needs to step back, take that 30,000 foot view. And if you're a network, you're looking at it in the totality of things, not, ju not just over the course of a year. But what has this done over the course of its entire media rights deal, the first media rights deal? If you're maintaining a certain level week in and week out, month in and month out, that you are showing stability to advertisers in, in particular, knowing that week in and week out, whether it's up or down 5%, 10%, whatever, you're going to be in a certain range. Okay. You're going to hit this many people like overall. And like I said, most importantly, you're hitting that 18 to 49 demographic, which is crucial for advertisers. That's what people are selling. And trying to get young viewers on linear TV these days that AEW and it is able to attract and like the whole fight game is able to attract, that is really big and something that they were able to kind of do organically, AEW and Warner Brothers from the start here. You know, Austin, and we're here with Austin Carp from the Sports Business Journal. Austin, if you could, could you break down exactly, not we'll get into the numbers a little bit, but where are the homes moving forward for AEW and their programming? So, you know, you got what um, Dynamite is going to remain on T on that Wednesday slot for TBS and Collision is going to be TNT on Saturday. What's probably going to go is that Friday night window. But that's also a package that sources are telling that is likely going to go to market. So there's gonna, maybe going to be another package out there that could wow. be sold. Is it Friday night? Um, is somebody like Fox interested? Because Fox had that WWE window for years. What have they done? They've had the shift. They've been showing college football, Big Ten football. Is Big Ten football, I mean, football's not all year, okay? But is that a window where AEW could go? Fox would maybe make sense in that window. They like, Fox really is bullish on that Friday night live primetime window. That used to be a dead space. That is not something where you, you showed a lot of live stuff. But, you know, WWE was able to show that it can produce numbers there. They're also seeing really strong college football numbers there on a Friday night. So I think that could be interesting down the road. And then where does Max and Max is strictly for, for pay-per-views? Yeah, that'll be the pay-per-views. They'll be discounted on there. But th they want to start to bring that AEW audience in there. I mean, this is all new for them. This is, this is a new audience. Like Tony Kong, yeah, you got to give him credit for launching this thing. I, I was, you know, I'm very skeptical about startups. I mean, I think they're like, you know, especially in the sports business, you can kind of equate it to restaurants. Like these things don't survive all the time. A lot yeah. of these leagues, I've seen leagues pop up and go, you know, they don't even last the season sometimes. So to see what he's created and to see the fandom out there and to grow it into the second media rights deal and to see the growth, 
I mean, they're getting around 170 million a year as part of this. And I, there are some marketing things in there, you know, to get that number to 170. But that number is kind of on par with what, ES, what ESPN just paid for the U.S. Open of tennis. You know, wow. That's a pretty, pretty solid, you know, company to be in in terms of properties. It's on par with what ESPN's paying La Liga for its soccer to be almost exclusively on that ESPN plus platform. So it shows what they're willing to pay these media companies to get young, strong content to your streaming platform. I think a lot of people, again, when we're looking online, I get a lot of my information online. If I miss a couple pieces of wrestling or a day, you can get the clips and everyone commenting on that. A lot of people do forget, like like we said earlier, like, oh, what the ratings are and what matters to them. But what matters most to these companies, it, it's not it is keeping up a week to week rating system. How, but how important is that the rating? Because I know so many people get their content, but sometimes it's the DVRs and, and households. Okay. That's part of it. But then it's impressions online, but then it's like how many people on YouTube click on the link when all those pieces come together. And much like you said, it's like, it's like starting a restaurant. Like we forget online. Most businesses, startups fail. Yeah. And not only is AEW not failing, like they're delivering an audience. And like you said, getting a younger, that 1849 demographic. What is something that stands out when doing that deal with Warner Brothers? Is it, like you said, the main, maintaining that ratings, but are there some other impressions that are all like, oh, did you know that they have 10, 10 million YouTube clicks every week? Like, I know they're thinking 1849 and long-term. What other pieces go into their mind when making that deal on the other side? Well, the reason that we're covering it, like we're sports business journal, is AEW or WWE sports traditionally? No, I think it's more entertainment. But everything else that they are doing, media rights, live entertainment, is directly correlated to the sports business. So that's why I'm paying attention to this sort of thing. And yes, what are they delivering? Ratings are important. Ratings are currency. That's how you judge how your property is doing. The NFL, their currency is really high, week in and week out, year after year, okay? So what the AEW is proving is that they got currency. They have weight in the industry. Now, what it's also important is that this is live. People want to watch these sorts of things live. Yeah, you can watch it on YouTube. You can catch a clip on, on social media. But if you're a fan and you're following all these things on social media, if you don't watch it live, you're going to see the results on social. Your friends are going to be talking about it. So getting that live rating, and that's why I get back to it, it's so important to advertisers, okay? You're not advertising on Netflix is something you're not getting that. That's just something different. That's that's not a live audience. That's why sport less than one percent of people are watching sports, you know, not live or outside of what, you know, a outside of a 24 hour window. You know, when you, when, you know, when you're thinking about these ratings in terms of how they're measured sports, you're always talking about this live plus same day rating. So, you know, even if you pause the game one time, you're not technically live. So all the ratings that we're reporting and that generally you're seeing for AEW and other sports is within a 24-hour window. It's the entertainment stuff that is sold to advertisers on Live Plus 3 or Live Plus 7. Because, yeah, you may wait a week to watch a program that, you know, you don't necessarily need to see live if it's entertainment. That's why sports is so important to not just the cable ecosystem, but just the broader media, eco media, media ecosystem and the advertising business. You know, Austin and Nick and I were talking about this before you hopped on. Uh, for me, when I started this show here on Sirius XM, pro wrestling show, people kind of looked at me like, what? You know, like, you know, yeah, we have we have the NFL, we have Major League Baseball. What are we going to do with the pro wrestling show? And honestly, they didn't put a lot of stock into it until they figured out what the audience and what we could bring in for an audience and paid subscribers. Are we past that point of like, pro wrestling being looked at as just like a guilty pleasure or something you should be ashamed of. I hope like so. Is, this is, is yeah, big business. This yeah. is a passionate fan base. And that's what advertisers, when they want to target that passionate fans, if you can say that a brand is associated with AEW in the long term, like, like it is part of the fabric of AEW. And similarly, that's why you've seen brands stick around so long with WWE. It's, it's why a brand like Home Depot has stuck around so long with college game day. People are just tuned into that week in and week out, year after year. If you can show that attachment, yeah, th this is this is good business. Uh, oh, please, Dave, please. No, because you talked about currency, and it's interesting because, 
you know, here on the show, we talk about ratings and how do you really look at ratings? Because people are cutting the cord on cable yeah. and a lot of the television ratings d don't mean the same now as they did 10 and 15 years ago. With the WWE moving to Netflix, how is that going to, how is that their currency going to look? Because it's not going to be the traditional rating system anymore. So when their deal is up with Netflix, you know, how are they going to use that currency to get a new deal moving forward? Yeah, I don't I as far as I understand, I don't I don't think it's going to be rated like by Nielsen like we've traditionally seen. Like it, it may be one of those like with Drive to Survive and the Tom Brady roast where every 6 months Nielsen does that data dump. You can see how many views there were or you know and how many total hours were spent with the programming. But again, this is this is something unique for Netflix. They haven't done that much live. And they certainly haven't done one where it's week in and week out. So, yeah, what that audience looks like is going to be very interesting. They've done some one offs. They had that tennis match with Carlos Alcaraz and Rafa Nadal. They did the Tom Brady roast. It was live, but a lot of people watched that tape because, you know, do you need to watch that live? Probably not. <laughs> uh, but more interesting is I'm paying attention what that those NFL games are going to do on Christmas Day on Netflix. Those, I think, are going to be rated somehow. If you're an advertiser, and if you're the NFL in particular, you want to know what those numbers are. You want to know if you're going to be going back to the well on this thing. But what each of these leagues want, each of these properties want, whether it's a documentary or a live game, is they want the global reach that Netflix brings. That's why they people keep you know going back to Amazon. Amazon, Netflix, these platforms are global. And the penetration they have... I mean, it is just huge, especially compared to a sports specific platform like an ESPN plus and even domestically a Paramount or a Max. That makes sense to me because I, I watch all sports almost all the time. And then it's just it became slowly over each year. It was just like, oh, this Thursday night game, you're going to have to open up Amazon to watch yeah. it. And like my dad, my dad's like, hey, wait it a minute. Made it it's easy. not on TV. Discoverability yeah. is easy. It's yeah. right there when you open up the app. They're getting better about that. And they, you just saw it. they just had their best. Prime Video just had its most watched Thursday night game ever in Cowboys Giants, even though it was a dud of a game. <laughs> and, but 16.2 million viewers, that's among the 75 most watched telecasts of the year in the United States. I, that's amazing. And it, it really is. I, at first, I was, I, my dad, he's like, it's not on TV. Where am I finding this game? I'm like, hang yeah. on, log into Amazon, grab my account. We'll do it. We'll figure it out. And just and then now he's just like, it, it, it's how quickly it catches on. He's like, I turn it on. It tells me, do I want to join it live? Do I want mm -hmm. to start beginning? Do you want to go here to this recap for the week? And I go, and and all of a sudden he's like that. So, and he's in the an older demographic where it's a little tricky to get on there. It, will there be more exploration like that going out there? Like a game on Nickelodeon? Or will like do you think in wrestling wise there'll be something mm -hmm. like that down the line? Oh yeah, like that Pandora's box is way open. That lid is blown off of Pandora's box. That is where things are going. People are just trying to figure out. All right, when, when are we making that switch? When is it like all streaming, but like they're still making money off of the cable TV business, even with the decline in subscribers. We're down 40, 50 million homes from the peak of this thing, uh, but, but they're still able to make money because sports is kind of propping, it up, propping that up. You've seen the migration of entertainment programming to a lot of these streaming platforms because you can watch it when you when you want, you know. It doesn't have to be you're not sitting down at eight, nine o'clock to watch Friends or Cheers or whatever anymore that you watch whenever you can watch. But sports, you got to be in front of your TV. And that's what's keeping that ecosystem going. But we've already seen decisions by companies like Disney. They said we're going to launch this ESPN flagship over the top direct to consumer thing next fall, kind of leading into the 2025 football season. And you're going to see more and more of that where it's going direct to consumer. That is the future. In AEW, it's reflected in their deal. They're they're sticking around with the cable business for now because Warner Brothers Discovery can continue to make money there, but they're reading the tea leaves. They see the Max of the future. They want to get their foot in the door and start getting their audience used to having to come to Max for some AEW programming. And it's funny, Austin, because like, Nick is talking about his his father and like, oh, my God, how do I get on this thing? Like, what channel is it on? You know, and, uh, you know, but we were talking about uh, NXT moving to the CW yesterday. And there were a lot of people that called in. I was like, I, I, I where, how do I get the CW? Like, you know, <laughs> what, what are you talking about? You scroll through the channels until you get the CW. <laughs> I mean, what's the problem? I think there's an entire generation, Austin, and my daughter is one of them. I don't remember the last time I saw my daughter sit on the couch and 
watch the TV. Everything is on the phone. Everything is on, you know, Well, that's why this new deal is important because there's a much bigger emphasis on putting stuff on social media because, yeah, that is another way that people are consuming the product. And they're not, maybe they're not going to sit on the couch every week, week in and week out. There are diehards that are going to do that. But a lot of people just want to see, oh, what was the clip last night from the event? Like, who won? Who won the main event? Like, did I miss anything? I just didn't have a chance to catch up to it. So having that strong social media presence, having those clips on YouTube readily available, that's going to be important. And you're also going to see the evolution, like Nick talked about. You said TV. What does TV even mean anymore? Okay. <laughs> Yep. Like, it, it, on my TV is Amazon Prime Video. On my TV is Netflix, but it's, there's also YouTube TV carrying ABC. And people talk about the CW. That's a broadcast TV network. That's an av available in pretty much as many homes as ABC, Fox, NBC. But they just made a concerted effort over these last couple of years, the CW and their parent company, Nexstar, to get out of what had been completely scripted TV and creating program that could be sold in syndication to go, all right, we need to be in the live events business. And you've seen them at ACC football. You see them at, you see them at WWE. I mean, they start off with live golf. I don't think they're going to renew that deal because nobody's watching live golf. I don't think anybody <laughs> really cares about that here, but uh, they are getting more and more into that live event business. Uh, first and foremost, this is extremely informative. Just so you know, yeah. it's not just like, this is a great <laughs> interview. Like I, I have so many questions, but there are so many fans online who listen to us discuss things and we're talking, but we're usually running with no data, no stats that you have right now. And it can't just be gut feelings, but, and thank you for this, by the way, this is very informative. Uh, I, I, I think like, like you said that 18 to 49 and getting people used to going to max and being ready for the future, because even me right now, I'm like, what, why is my cable bill $450? I'm like, why am I doing this? Yep. And, I, and I just looked into it this last week and it was like, well, you can just cut it down to this. You can get a uh, Hulu sports and get this other thing here. And then you don't even really need your TV. So as that continues, do you think that this deal with Warner brothers, will, will that stay long-term or, or will it be like, if they're if they're getting the young people over to max slowly but surely for those pay-per-views and that becomes a bigger business for them does that go hey you're doing great is it based on how they perform this next year how do they look at that going here's where we go full time after this i think the length of the deal is important here that it is only a 3 year deal because i think all sides kind of want to see where things are right. i think warner brothers discovery like they they have their own issues and you know they lost the NBA, so they, that's been very high profile. They've been adding a lot of content, you know, renewing with AEW, bringing on the French Open. Uh, they still have March Madness. Let's not forget about that. They're not going anywhere. They, <laughs> you got to go to TNT and True TV and TBS and you know, obviously CBS to catch a lot of that every every fall, every spring, excuse me. But uh, I think AEW is also looking at the landscape and being like, you know, rights live rights continue to go up. Let Let's see where we're at in three years. Um, maybe they're maybe the Maybe we can get even more money in a couple of years. We've already talked about the NFL had signed a long term deal and all, uh, and they're in like year four or three of that. And they're already talking about opting out of their deal in 2029 because they think they can get even more money than they got the first go around. <laughs> so, I mean, the WNBA's deal that they just signed that hasn't even started yet. They're already thinking like maybe we opt out in the middle of this thing because. We got Caitlin Clark. We got some big names coming in. We have draws, people that are going to draw in eyeballs. You got, you know, Juju Watkins coming out and you got Paige Becker who's going to be coming into the league, creating these really big new rivalries. If you can create content that people want, yeah, opt out. You keep the deal a little shorter and you get more money down the road. You know, Nick, it's pretty insane when you think about it, because, you know, we just watched that Mr. McMahon documentary on Netflix and how the territories would pay the television station to air their shows because they looked at it as paid programming to get people to go to the arena. So, right. you know, you're talking 40, 45 years ago that, you know, companies were paying television stations to, <laughs> yeah. to play pro wrestling. And now all these, you know, outlets NBA are paying. used to be on tape delay. Like, I mean, we're talking like 30 years ago. I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 it's really is crazy when you think about it, Max, like for something like Max, like you said, they they know it's a younger audience. They're gonna grow with AEW. Does a, does an outlet like Max appreciate the fact that AEW is a young company as well? Maybe they like the fact that it's only been around for five years, and that with them as Max grows, AEW is gonna grow too. 
Oh, absolutely. I think Max was a key component in this, not just staying on TNT and TBS. Max was a crucial part of this. And I think it's like what you said, taking an, a property that you have grown organically with, AEW audiences have not known anything else than being on Warner Brothers Discovery's channels. And if you can keep them there, like that, they only know to go one place. And now if you can now train that audience like, hey, we're also going to be on Max, your pay-per-views, you're here, but you're going to continue to get TNT and TBS. Yes, there is value in that. And I think that's why they were able to come to a deal here. Is this the new way things are going to happen? I look at the WWE and they have they have some of their some of their shows on Peacock and then now NXT's on CW yeah. and SmackDown's on USA and Raw's on Netflix and it looks like with AEW, hey, we're on Max, we're also on TNT and they they may be on Fox in the future. Is this is this the way things are going to go where it's not going to just be one family of networks, but it could be spread out amongst many networks? Everyone now is going to be following and already has that NFL model where you have games on CBS and Fox and NBC and ESPN. You saw it with the Big Ten. They're like, we want not just games on Big Ten Network. We want Fox. We want CBS. We want NBC. You got to go to all of those places for Big Ten. You even see it with the WNBA. They've got the ESPN deal, but they're also right now on CBS. They're on ION. They're on Amazon. They're on a lot of places. So, yes, you want to get as broad of reach. That is the strategy these days, as broad a reach as you can for your property so that maybe you are getting a different demo on this network versus this demo. Like It just depends on what networks you're going to be partnering with and what you and your advertisers want to achieve with the telecasts. So uh, be before we finish up here again, this is so this is beautiful, by the way. Thank you for this information. It, it really it's so it's so it's it's so great for us to have the actual like, information coming from you with this. Do you think long term, do you think uh, maintaining the ratings that they are now, aside from all the go moving on to max, say AEW continues their ratings or maybe it goes up uh, just a little bit. Is that enough to get them a bigger deal when the time comes? Or is it, are they looking for just, you're, you're sustaining this number, we're happy with that. Or, oh, you went up to this number, now we are going to do more to max, and now your deal is going to be more. How does that work in the next couple of years here? You know, because it is such a short deal, yeah, you're going you're to pay attention to, obviously, what the numbers continue to do on linear. You want to maintain that. If it goes down a little bit, how much? If it's dropping by 25%, that's that might be an issue. If you're down five or six percent, like a margin of error sort of thing, or just, yeah. you know, it's cyclical in nature, I, I think that's okay. You've seen properties, whether it be, you know, like NASCAR, even when they were on the, the decline year after year after year, they were really able to get really strong, a really strong new media deal. So they're going to pay attention to that. They're going to pay attention to the pay-per-views, how many people are coming in the max, and that'll help determine. There's also a fourth-year option. For uh, AEW, I believe that, that's what our sources are telling us. So if they're if they're liking it, there may be a fourth year in there where they're able to look. You know, all right, let's see how this is doing. Let's give it one more year, and maybe we. You know, I'm sure there's an exclusive negotiating window at the end of it as well. But you know, maybe it's something they take back out to the open market.